So last month, I asked over 500 people how they'd rate almost every ship in the Wings of Fire series, and one pairing rose above them all. One couple was the uncontested best ship in the series, Sundu and Willow. So today, I wanted to take some time, focus on these two, and explain why I think their relationship and how it was written is nothing less than a work of genius by the author. Also, it's officially summer for me, and I've decided to try to reach 10k by the time it's over. Can we do it? I don't know, but if you enjoy the content and want to reach for this goal alongside me, consider subscribing. Leave a comment, hit that thumbs up, it would really help. Now, if you're not convinced yet, well, it's time for me to put my money where my mouth is. I hope you enjoy the video. First things first, this ship does involve some politically contentious topics, and I just want to make it really clear, I'm not here to tell you what you should or should not believe. I'm here to analyze the writing, and in this video, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to outline the author's goal with the relationship, and then how she managed to accomplish it. Now, in analyzing this ship, I could talk about how they really care for each other, or work hard to support one another, or have a fun dynamic, or, you know, the usual relationship stuff. But to be completely honest with you, they aren't particularly special in any of those regards. I mean, don't get me wrong, they certainly do them well, but a number of other relationships in the series do all of those things better. What makes Sundu and Willow such a well-written relationship is how perfectly the author manages to use the relationship as a way of connecting to her LGBT or allied audience while simultaneously legitimizing the LGBT themes of the series. And it goes so much deeper than just making the point of view character gay. That would accomplish nothing other than to alienate part of the reader base. It involves the struggles that these two work together to overcome, and just as importantly, it involves the struggles that these two don't have to overcome. Now, before we dive into the specifics of how Tui managed to accomplish this goal, let's first examine the basis from which it was built. Regardless of your personal stance on the matter, the Wings of Fire series has always had non-hetero themes going on in the background. Usually, it's just something mentioned casually and moved past without a second thought. There's Umber in Book 6, Anemone as well as Cobra in Book 10, Snowflake and Snow Fox in the Winglets, Violet's two dads in Dragon Slayer, and Blue's two moms in Book 11. I'm sure there's more I didn't notice, but the point is that these were all important enough for Tui, the author, to include that she intentionally worked them into the story. That doesn't happen by accident. In a story where you have a relatively limited number of pages to establish, then develop, then conclude every single thing you want your story to have, every sentence counts. Dedicating any space to a particular idea means it's significant enough to the author's conception of the story that it deserves space within it. But those are all just background things, taking up only a little page space here and there, and it is much different to incorporate a non-hetero relationship as a primary plot point, and in book 13, it was something she decided to do. So how exactly does Tui work this idea into her story? Well, to start with, she continues to build upon the established world of the series. Up to the beginning of book 13, same-sex relationships had never really been given special attention. They existed, and that was pretty much that. Sundu and Willow then take center stage, and all of a sudden, special attention has to be paid to their relationship. They are the focal characters. Now, this is the first important thing to note about them. Despite their relationship being one of the primary plot points of book 13, their orientation is almost never brought up. These two dragons, not a single time, encounter anyone who questions the gender they're attracted to. It's almost never even mentioned or pointed out to the audience. In fact, it's basically just ignored. It is a given in the Wings of Fire universe that sometimes female dragons like other female dragons, and to see this happen is so completely ordinary that it's not even worth drawing attention to. In doing this, by not highlighting their orientation, Tui brings our attention to the broader distinction between our world and this fictional one. She offers an alternative in which these sorts of things are normal, and in doing so, serves to normalize them in the eyes of the audience. But that's not really anything special. I mean, it doesn't take any sort of genius to write a gay relationship in a world in which that's the norm. What does take genius is to write a gay relationship in a world in which that's the norm, and still have it ultimately be a coming out story. Sundu and Willow have a coming out of the closet arc. They have to hide their relationship from their friends and families. They have to sneak away to be with each other, and eventually they have to face the problems that arise from being in a relationship that one's friends and family may not approve of. In this case, it happened to be that instead of the secret revolving around who they're attracted to, it revolves around their tribal allegiances. By doing this, Tui creates a relationship that simultaneously serves to fulfill three goals. It 
creates main characters who are relatable to members of the LGBT community, characters who give insight into those lives to those who may never themselves experience it, and it does both of those things while still working to normalize LGBT relationships via the world around them. It accomplishes the first two by having the point of view characters be LGBT themselves, and by having these characters face potentially similar struggles to them. But it accomplishes the third goal by eliminating the struggles that would be damaging to the goal of normalization, and somehow makes all three of these things work in tandem instead of hindering each other. And that is why this relationship is such a work of absolute genius. In any other situation, in order to make the characters more relatable and understandable, they would have to exist in a world in which gay relationships are not the norm. But that would run opposed to the goal of normalizing these things. On the flip side, by having characters who exist in a world in which they don't have to face the challenges that LGBT readers may, the goal of normalization may be met, but the relatability and understandability aspects would be sacrificed. By introducing the two separate Leafwing tribes, Tui sets up this relationship in such a way that those three things are no longer mutually exclusive. In every single facet of accomplishing her goal, Tui takes what, in any other circumstance, would have to be a set of gives and takes, and turns them entirely into a set of things advancing her goal, to represent and empower her LGBT readership. So that is why, in my opinion, the writing behind this ship is one of the most well thought through pieces of writing in this entire series. With that, I hope you enjoyed this analysis, and thank you for watching. <laughs>